Do you need a license to sell hot dogs? And if you do, how do you get a permit to sell hot dogs? So in this video, we are actually going to dive into the 10 permits and licenses that you will probably need if you're going to look to create a hot dog business and create a professional and profitable hot dog cart business. These 10 things you want to pay attention to very closely because you will potentially need them in any city or county that you're going to open your hot dog business in. We're going to dive into those 10 right now. All right, so welcome back to Marketing Food Online. So in this video of Marketing Food Online, it is Damien Roberti, founder and CEO. We're going to dive into a question that I got on our food truck channel from a mobile food truck business entrepreneur who was looking to create a hot dog cart business, which actually can be one of the most lowest investment, highest profitable food businesses on the planet, believe it or not, because the investment for this is very, very minimal compared to many other food businesses, to be honest with you. And the margins are ridiculously high. So I'm going to go even into the 10 specific business licenses, permits, and other things that you're going to need in order to do this legally. Uh, of course, yes, you do need to have a business license and about 10 other ones I'm actually going to dive into and explain to you in order to operate your hot dog business, your hot dog cart business. We're going to actually go from number 10 down to number one. Number 10, sales tax license. So since you'll be selling hot dogs directly to customers, a sales tax license is, of course, essential. Now, this license authorizes your business to collect sales tax, a crucial part of the revenue system specifically for your state, and then you will remit that and send that up to them every six months to a year. So sales tax license comes in at number 10. Number nine, commissary letter of agreement. So an unsung hero among permits, as they say, a commissary letter of agreement actually provides proof that you have access to a commercial kitchen. Now, this agreement ensures that you have a facilities for sanitation purposes, sanitary prep preparation, and of course, storage of the food, thus reinforcing the health and hygiene aspect of your hot dog cart business. So commissary letters. So many states actually require hot dog stand owners to actually have a commissary or commercial kitchen attached to their business. That's going to be the central location where most of your prep work and getting everything together, cleaning out the uh, dirty water for the day, sanitizing your unit, and everything else that goes along with that. It's going to be done at a commercial kitchen or a commissary. But the actual commissary letter of agreement, that's going to be the legal binding agreement between you, the hot dog entrepreneur, and the commissary kitchen. Number eight, zoning and parking permits. Now, this is, gets a little bit tricky, so you need to be sure to check, specifically in the city or county, zoning and parking permits is something that is very, very critical because many hot dog entrepreneurs that first start out think, of course, they can just go to a location and maybe ask permission to be at a certain area or a certain parking lot and then just pop open and start selling. You need to be very, very careful. So to do, to do legally set up your hot dog cart, you will also be required uh, zoning and parking permits along with any other permits that you're going to get. These are location-specific licenses that actually determine where you can station your business without violating local ordinances. So this is very, very important. You've got to be aware of where you're going to be parking, but not just that. You need to make sure you have the authorization to do that. Well, you get that through these zoning and parking permits. Coming in at number seven, so vendor's permit. So, of course, a vendor's permit allows you to sell the hot dogs to the public. This permit actually uh, further solidifies your place in the market as an approved vendor. Uh, that's either going to be from your city or county, of course, depending upon where you're going to operate, uh, allowing you to conduct business operations smoothly and, of course, legally. Uh, so number eight, number seven is actually vendor's permits. Coming in at number six, yes, believe it or not, many food trucks, if not all, have to go through this, but... Hot dog carts may have to go through, the, go through this process as well. Uh, so a fire, number six is a fire department permit. Um, a fire department permit uh, becomes necessary if your hot dog cart actually uses cooking equipment that might lead to potential fire hazards. So this permit assures your setup is inspected for possible dangers and adequate fire safety protocols that are in place. Believe it or not, there are fire, fire uh, department permits that are necessary on many hot dog carts if you are using any type of flammable propane of anything of that sort, if it's not electrical or if it's not something that's just generator based, um, there could be a potential for you to have the fire department permit. Don't underestimate. If you have to have it in your city or county, double check and be sure. Number five, of course, the traditional health permit. So a health permit usually issued by the local health department ensures that your hot dog cart business adheres to local health and safety codes. Now, regular inspections are part of the game here, and this is something that, of course, ensuring your business maintains the stringent food safety standards. Now, this is going to be for cleanliness, uh, food preparation, food handling, just ensuring that what you are operating on, the actual equipment, is kept at a sanitary and hygienic 
practices. You've got best practices in place as far as cleaning, uh, going to the commissary kitchen or commercial kitchen at the end of each day will best basically ensure that this will be clean and sanitary. You definitely want to do that because a lot of times people will, uh, word of mouth is really good. You know, if, if you have a customer that comes up and you're not very clean or sanitary and you don't follow through with it, and of course the health department could actually, they come in and they'll inspect your cart. And if they do find that it's not, they can grade you in a way that actually could shut you down. But you want to make sure your stuff, as far as your equipment's concerned, is clean and sanitary. Okay, number four, food handler's permit. This is a pretty uniform permit across the board when it comes to everywhere from food trucks to bakeries, cafes, or even hot dog carts. So as a hot dog cart operator, though, one of the most significant tasks is managing your food directly. A food handler's permit asserts that all individuals engaged in your business, you, are adequately trained in managing food safety, thus minimizing any risk of foodborne illnesses. So coming into number four is your food handler's permit. Now, this type of a permit, normally you can get, I believe the company's called Serve Safe. Uh, many of these fast food and food restaurants and eateries actually have to have somebody on duty or on the premises that has to have that certification. So you being the hot dog cart operator, there's a really good likelihood you're going to have to have a food handler's permit. Coming in at number three, the mobile food facility permit. So giving that a hot dog cart business is inherently mobile, obviously. Obtaining a mobile food facility permit is an integral part of that process. So even though you're not a food truck, you're not some type of uh, on-premise catering company, food carts such as hot dog carts have to go through that same process. So potentially getting that same permit as a mobile food facility permit is something you'll have to get as well. Number two, food service license. Now, this is, of course, a little bit different than a mobile food facility permit, but to have and operate a successful hot dog cart business, you'll need to have the food service license. Uh, the food service license, a, a sector specific permit, this actually attests to your hot dog cart business is primed to serve food that meets established food safety guidelines. So acquiring it involves comprehensive knowledge, of course, of the food code, usually administered by the county health department in a test format. So this is something you need to double check with your health department as well. Many, if not all cities or counties that I'm aware of will actually have to have some type of food service license. It's totally different than many other licenses. Um, so this brings us down to number one. So you might be thinking this is a no-brainer, but believe it or not, you can't just do this type of a business up and on your own. You need to have mm -hmm. a business license. So number one, your city or county needs to authorize you to have a business license. Now, the basic foundation uh, for any venture, the business license, okay, this is the first permit you will need to acquire. This license testifies your legitimate right to conduct business operations in a particular jurisdiction, meaning that a city or county that you're going to operate in has given you the thumbs up and said, hey, Damien, you can go ahead and operate your hot dog cart. You're good to go. Now, these are the 10 license and permits that traditional hot dog cart businesses are going to encounter over their lifetime. Now, if you have known of anything different, by the way, of this, uh, do let us know. Uh, so basically, in conclusion, closing here, understanding food licenses and permit requirements for a hot dog cart business goes beyond merely comprehending. It's about embracing these pre prerequisites on vital elements of your entrepreneurial journey. So you want to make sure that you really are on top of these. And many of them are also something you need to renew every year. So they may have a fee that's involved annually. You need to double check that as well. Many of them are. Some are actually six months, believe it or not. Every six months, you may have to redo them. So if you have any comments or questions about getting your hot dog cart up and running and what permits do you need to get it up and running, let us know down below. I'll see you guys on our next video.